favorite Stacy rod by far is a 704 CB graphite. Um, I made my first jerk bait rod in 1989 with Abu Garcia, forever and ever and ever ago. Um, and I've made them for five different companies. I've made probably 20 jerk bait rods. And as the materials have got better, I mean, my 704 CB is the best jerk bait rod I've ever had in my hands. Um, it's just, and it's funny because I get asked that the exact question about three times a day, and I had an in-depth conversation today. It's, it's just the right. I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, you throw a jerk bait rod, a lot of times you'll throw it, and you know, that tip will sit there, and it'll. I mean, every time that tip's working like that, it's actually putting drag on the line. It's slowing your cast down. Sometimes it'll actually make your bait tumble and stuff. If you cast my 704, you throw it, you will t and that tip stays there. It's got enough load in it, and the material, then it releases, and it just locks. And I mean, it casts a lot better. And you can drive a Stacy into the wind, like with no, like no rod that I've ever used. A lot of guys are throwing a 5. I think it's too much rod. And a lot of guys are throwing my 704 CB glass. I don't like that rod. I mean, it's a great rod. You know, and I throw little speed traps. I throw eighth ounce speed traps on that 704 glass, especially in a Delta. The speed traps in a Delta are just a no-brainer. But I don't use that for a jerkbait rod. But I'll tell you right now, I have a huge following on that glass rod for a Stacy. There's quite a bit. The, the, the glass is, is quite a bit softer, um, much more forgiving. Even on the graphite rod, really forgiving, too. The way I fish a Stacy, when I, once one lits it, I mean, I load, and I load hard. I mean, I swing that, and I really put a bow in that rod. Um, to say the glass does it, the glass is even more limber. I, it's a personal deal. Honestly, I started with the glass. And all my crankbait rods are in the, in the champion line. It, um, 764, is it Goliath? No, the 764 is graphite. And that's a, that's a Maccabee rod, too. It, um, probably my number one selling crankbait rod. You know, my number one selling jerkbait rod is a 704 for sure. My number one selling crankbait rod is my 764. Champion series. Champion series, yeah. And that, that 764, it's not, it's not going to handle DD-22s. It's just not enough rod. But, I mean, I built that thing for, for a uh, deep little end because that's the crankbait that I throw a lot. Um, I built it for the deep little end, but yet I can throw, you know, little quarter-ounce baits and stuff with it. It's a very good casting rod, you know, for the little stuff. Like, if you're going to throw a quarter, even like a little quarter-ounce speed trap, it's a phenomenal rod for it. Um, it, can still, it can still do it all. question is, you know, basically the line and the setup for a Stacy 90 and really talking really more about line than anything. Um, great question. I tell you, I, I used to throw a lot of 10-pound tests, and I threw a lot of CXX P-line. And... Over the years, you know, with the better rods and stuff, I've dropped down to 8-pound. I, I can get actually more depth out of 8-pound test. And I throw 8-pound CXX P-line. Um, there's a lot of the guys that are throwing fluorocarbon because, of the, you know, fluorocarbon is heavier and it actually sinks. I don't let a bait rest, you know, a lot. So I'm sticking right with, with my 8-pound CXX P-line. I don't do anything special as far as rigging on the Stacy other than change the hooks. Two number four round bin Gamagatsus. I'm adamant about round bin over EWGs are much, much stronger design. EWGs, if you hit them in a gill plate, it can spring. Round bins tend to penetrate. They're just much stronger. Um, number fours and eight pound CXX and, and you're in business. Nothing really special. Um, I version three Stacy's. Version three Stacy's, you don't need it. Version twos, yes, I put three lead, three suspend dots. Right underneath the bill, I put two and then I put one in front of the first hook hanger. Good question. The cadence on a, on a jerkbait. A uh, little bit tough. How do I start? The cadence on a jerkbait. My favorite's a Stacy 90, and it has been for probably a dozen years. I have a standard retrieve that I start with. Um, first of all, the guys that talk about letting a bait set for 20 or 30 seconds, I don't do that. I mean, you know, if you think about it, pop, 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 pause. You know, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, and I mean, I have to hit it. If I let a bait set five seconds, that's a long time for me. Um, again, talking about that percentages deals, I think most of the time, if you let a bait set there for two or three seconds, the bite is when that bait goes to, when next time you hit it, it goes to escape, that's when you get your bites. So I, I don't think your bites go up a lot more by letting a bait set there at 30 seconds or letting a bait set there at 3 to 5 seconds. So I let a bait set 3 to 5 seconds maximum. Most of the time, pop, pop, pop. 
I mean, I'll let a bait set like one to two seconds. All you're making it do is look like a crippled or injured bait fish. Now, if, and I actually like my baits to slowly sink. That's the reason the version three Stacy came about, or the suspend dots on the version two. It barely sinks. I mean, I mean, you got to, it barely sinks. And the way that I work it, you would never actually know that bait sinks. But the other thing it does, I weighted it f forward so the bill actually tips down. In my mind, when I pop it, that bait's already at a diving angle, so I'm going to get a little bit more depth out of it. Um, that's what I believe, and that's the reason I weight those baits, you know, forward. They don't sink like this. They sink like this. And on the cadence, if, if I get in a lot of followers, I am immediately changing up. I'm doing something to try to get those fish to react. And believe it or not, most of the time, it's working it faster, not slower. You know, I'm getting them fish to react more. Um, and I'll play around with my cadence out of the way. For the most part, jerk, 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 pause. I mean, I hit the bait one, two, or three times. I don't think that there's a right or wrong way, you know, on a jerk bait. If you want to, some of the guys will just never pause it. They'll work it all the way in. I do not think that works as well as the pause. If I'm getting followers and I, they're not eating it, I'm changing up somehow or another. Most of the time, it's not color. Even though that's one of the things you can try, most of the time it's not color if they're following or not eating it. It's, you know, you can try the retrieve. And a high percentage of the time on those days that they're doing a lot of following, they're not eating, it's just a hair pulling day. I mean, they're just, you just don't figure them out. Lots of days I never figure out how to catch those fish. But I try. I mean, cadence by far over color, but I will change bait colors after I've drilled myself crazy for an hour with followers. But, um, Phenomenal technique. Cadence as far as uh, um, water temperature and spotted bass versus largemouth. Largemouth definitely tend to slow down a lot more than spotted bass. Spotted bass are eating machines. And, um, does it change your cadence? Does it change what you do? Does not. I do not change my cadence for, for necessarily for spotted bass or largemouth. Uh, I fish it pretty much the same. I have, I will honestly say at Clear Lake when we're talking water temperature down like, you know, 42, 44, which is for the most part, what it usually gets to in our winter times. I have seen it 39.9. My favorite time of year to throw a jerk bait on Clear Lake. The colder the water, the more that I'm going to throw a jerk bait. I'm going to find a school and then I'm not going to move around. I'm going to pretty much stay in that area. I might tend to slow down a little bit at Clear Lake, 42 to 44 degree water. Other than that, I really don't. And I don't vary my cadence from largemouth to. Uh, the spotted bass. I know in the Delta they fish a lot of jerk baits down there and they fish a lot of them in the, you know, in the dead end sloughs. They fish a lot of them in the marinas. And them guys are big on a natural suspending bait and they pause it a long time. And I've caught fish on that pause, but most of my bites come when I pop that bait and it goes to get away. It's a crippled or injured bait fish going to escape and it triggers a strike. Basses are just a ferocious predator. Jerk baits, gear ratio. And, uh, and the color of Stacy's. Gear ratio first. Most of the time I'm throwing a six to one. I've just got used to it. I will not throw a five to one. It feels like I'm always trying to reel to catch up. I can throw a seven to one easily, but a six is just kind of natural for me. But I mean, it wouldn't be unusual to see it on a seven to one reel on my rod. But, but the faster, because I, you know, I only want to go pop, pop, slight turn, pop, pop, and catch up. I don't want to be doing this to catch up. And the difference between five to one and six to one um, to me, it feels like forever, and it's really like probably a, you know, a half a turn, but it just kind of just throws me off. Um, colors of Stacy's. Ghost Minnow's been a number one color forever. American Shad overtook it one year. Um, it's hard to beat Ghost Minnow, and Phantom Chartreuse Shad, which is actually my color. I mean, that's a color. Corey Finsky made that color for me. You know, I, I mean, I talked to them because over the years, Ghost Minnow has darkened up. And it's not the same as it was, you know, 10 or 15 years or 10 or 12 years ago. It's darkened up. Still a beautiful bait, still a highly productive bait, but it's darkened up. And I want something for those bright, sunny days when you've got so much light penetration. I want a subtle colored bait that's, you know, fairly clear so it doesn't, it doesn't just look like a Stacy 90 in the water on those clear days. So I talked with Corey, and it took a while. He's a master with an airbrush, and he finally got what I was after, and we call it Phantom Chartreuse Shad. Um, it's a phenomenal color. It's a great delta color. And believe it or not, these fish can see a lot better than we give them credit for. In, I took a pretty good whipping at Orville about the first year that that bait came out. The lake was dirty. 
I didn't grab that bait. I mean, I'm grabbing, I was actually fishing uh, Table Rock Shad because I wanted a brighter colored bait in that dirty water. And Brian Ruthman whipped us at Oroville on the Phantom Chartreuse Shad. And I just like, and the water was dirty. So, you know, throw that theory out the window. I went back the next day, and they were, they were on that bait ten times better than they were on that, that bright colored bait I was throwing. Richard actually finished second in that tournament. I was about 15th, and, um, and Brian won on that, on that really clear Phantom Chartreuse Shad. Can't go wrong. Phantom Chartreuse Shad, Ghost Minnow, um, Chartreuse Shad. Those three baits, if you've got those three baits, you're pretty much covered. Clear Lake and Shasta, because of the shad, I like a flashy bait like Aurora Black. Some guys are throwing American Shad. I like Aurora Black. It's not quite as flashy. And I do carry the Table Rock Shad for when the water, you know, got a lot of color to it. But usually when you've got that kind of color, I'll throw a spinner bait because I think a spinner bait actually catches better quality fish than a jerk bait. Um, I just always believe that. And, but that's, that's the only colors I carry. All the, they've, they've got a million colors, but if you just stick with those standards, I mean, you really got them covered.